All right, so the previous video was all about energy in general, the forms of energy, different kinds of energy, how energy can convert and transfer. This one is about more generic categories of energy, and those two categories are kinetic energy and potential energy. And we're going to focus in on talking about those categories of energy by using the example of gravitational energy and the resulting kinetic energy if something falls due to gravitational potential energy. All right, so let's get into that a little bit. What is gravitational potential energy? And basically, what we're looking at is this situation right here. We've got a rock. We're not showing anything uh, holding it up. So it's actually, uh, we're just going to say it's just about to fall. Say somebody just let go and it's about to fall. So it is a certain height above the ground here, all right? There's a distance between the rock and the ground. So that is the height of the rock above the ground. You guys, obviously, that's a distance, all right? It's measured in perhaps meters, all right? So this rock is, uh, it has energy, and it's not because of anything other than where it is. If the rock is on the ground here, whoosh, it has no potential energy. It's already at the bottom. But since it's up here in the air, it could fall. All right? And since it can fall, it has energy based on how much mass it is. More mass, more energy. Higher above the ground, more energy. So the amount of work that can be done, if you remember the formal definition of energy, is how far this thing can fall and, and the energy that's released in doing so. All right? And that's going to make it turn into energy of motion. So in other words, the gravitational potential energy would turn to kinetic energy when it falls. All right. So uh, here's the formal definition of gravitational potential energy. It's the energy of an object due to its height, the object's height above a surface. All right. So there you go for the first one. Cool. All right. So when gravitational potential energy is uh, released or converted basically by dropping something, then that energy turns into kinetic energy. And kinetic energy in terms of falling would be the energy due to the object's motion or its falling, right? So the Earth pulls everything down with the force of gravity. Everything is pulled down all the time. Even if you're on the ground, you're still being pulled down. And you know that because you don't randomly go flying off places, right? So gravity is always pulling, always pulling. And when something is no longer supported by the ground or a chair or a table or a stool or your bed, for example, say you fall out of bed. Well, the bed is no longer supporting you once you roll off the side and you're going to start to fall and then you will hit the ground. You'll feel the force of that impact and so on. Now, if you fall far enough, you're going to accelerate. Acceleration due to gravity. All right. And I don't know that we I don't think we actually gave the number. Oh, we did. It was 10 meters per second squared is the acceleration due to gravity. That's called little g. Anyway, um, that's going to pull you down. And as you're falling, your gravitational potential energy is going to convert into kinetic energy. And a little bit of it will be lost to friction along the way, right? So that's the idea. As this thing's potential energy turns into kinetic energy, it's going to fall faster and faster and faster. So up here at the top highest point that this rock is at, that's the maximum potential energy, and then down here at the ground, down here at the ground, right there, we have the just before it hits, not at the ground, like obviously once it hits, its kinetic energy is going to be zero again pretty quick, but the maximum kinetic energy is right, like right there, just before it hits the ground. Right there. All right, so at the top here, maximum potential energy. Right here at the bottom is the maximum kinetic energy that this object is going to have during its fall. All right, so at this point here, 
that we were talking about at that point, just as it's about to hit, like the exact split second before it hits the ground. Um, if you ignore air resistance, the energy of the object there, the kinetic energy there, is equal to the potential energy before it started falling. All right? That's the conservation of energy principle. So I'll write that off to the side here really quick. Um, essentially, the maximum PE is equal to the maximum KE if we ignore air resistance. We have to ignore air resistance, otherwise this is not true. All right, the maximum kinetic energy will be slightly less than the maximum potential energy in the case of falling if we actually account for air resistance. All right, because there's always a little bit of energy lost to friction. All right, so as we were just talking about there, uh, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, when you drop things or launch things, energy is converted between gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. So if you drop something, the potential energy turns into kinetic energy. If you launch something into the air, then the kinetic energy, the energy of motion of that object, gets converted into potential energy. So you're going to gain some potential energy. If you launch that thing up into the air, then depending on what the initial velocity is, so this thing's going to go up, right? It's going to launch up. Depending on what that initial velocity is, you're going to reach a certain height above the ground, and you can actually calculate that um, using some neat little, a neat little formula as long as you know the mass of the thing that you're launching. So that's pretty cool. If you know how fast it is when it launches and you know how much mass it has, you can actually find how high it'll go. Um, again, though, you have to ignore air resistance. So you'll be off a little bit because there's always air resistance. All right. Even if we ignore it, it's still there. The only time we can actually do a problem without air resistance is when we sort of do it in a make-believe physics way instead of actually in the real world. But sometimes you get objects that are very aerodynamic and have very little air resistance, so you can mostly ignore it. Anyway, so energy converts between these two. So when you drop, potential energy turns into kinetic energy, energy of motion. And then when you launch something, the kinetic energy turns into potential energy as the object rises into the air. Interesting thing about launching, say you throw a basketball straight up in the air, eventually it gets to its highest point, and then it's going to fall back down, right? So there you have both launching and falling. The energy starts with your muscles, and you throw it up into the air, and then um, after a little while, reaches its maximum point. During that time, the kinetic energy of your throw is turning into potential energy. It reaches its maximum at the peak, and then the potential energy from there starts to convert back into kinetic energy until the ball falls, and you either catch it or it hits the ground. So that's pretty cool. Now here are your equations. We love equations. Here they are. Um, kinetic energy formula and the potential energy formula. So these are what you would use for solving um, any kind of problems you might have with, with uh, involving these two things, especially throwing an object in the air or dropping one. All right. So let's just take a really quick uh, imaginary scenario here. I didn't put this in, but all right. So kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. See, m is mass, v is velocity. All right. Um, g is acceleration due to gravity. H is height above the ground. I did actually put those all in there. That's nice. Um, so kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared, and gravitational potential energy mass times g times h. So g, again, acceleration due to gravity. All right, h is height above the ground. All right, so you can calculate potential energy with that. You can calculate kinetic energy with that. And, well, we're actually going to do some problems with this in a separate video, not in this video. All right, thanks for watching.